Being a pioneer is not easy and takes a lot of courage, especially in agriculture. After visiting John Hearman's operation in Haxton, Colorado, it gave me a new perspective on how some farmers must overcome critical voices when adopting soil health methods that are viewed as being against the grain. There's a lot of research out there about soil health and a ton of technical information, but none of it does us any good unless we can see how it actually takes place at the ground level. My name is Tim Hamrich from the Future of Agriculture podcast. Cool Planet and I are gonna travel the country and capture stories about how land stewards and growers and farmers are actually developing their own soil health and how that impacts their lives and the food they're growing for you. We're here in Haxton, Colorado, which is in the northeast part of the state. We're here to see John Hearman, who's a young farmer who's been using some really innovative practices after he shifted his perspective to one that really values soil and soil health. Hey, John. Hey, Tim Hamrich. Nice to meet you. How's it going? Thanks for having us out here. Yeah, thanks for coming. So uh, tell us about this place. How long has your family been in this neck of the woods? Oh, my dad's lived at this house since 1947. and. His, his dad was in the area. We're here to see kind of some of these innovative practices we've been hearing about with what you're doing with soil. How long have you kind of been prioritizing soil health as a main part of your farming operation? Oh, probably the last four or five years I've really focused on soil health part of it. Well, do you mind if we go take a look and see some of it? Yeah, sure, why don't we head over here. John, uh, if you could just kind of walk us through what, what we've got here. This is a cover crop mix. It's already pre-mixed, just a little bit left that I cleaned out of the drill. I usually seed some compost pellets in with my stuff, so there's some compost pellets, um, some yellow squash, soybeans, sunflowers, mung beans, some rye grass, a bunch of brassicas or some of the smaller ones, turnips and radishes. And how, how do you go about deciding what to put in your cocktail? Just depending on what previous crop was there and what crop is, is going to go there next usually, and depending on what the residue conditions are. And, you know, like after weed, I don't like to put in a lot of grasses because I already had a grass in there and it's depleted a lot of the soil nutrients. So usually I go in with a high legume mix or a broadleaf mix behind wheat and you know, kind of the opposite behind peas. I'm going in with a lot of grasses a lot of warm season grasses and cool season grasses and instead of broadleafs since I was growing a broadleaf on there. Being a, a, a pioneer or progressive in any field is going to be, you know, kind of the, by definition going alone. How have you been able to kind of overcome that challenge? Uh, mostly just by building a network of, you know, some friends that I've met at some of the conferences and people that I know that have been doing the same stuff and just keeping in touch with them. It's hard to work on your own fields and, and do this stuff around here and, and not be ostracized by other people or, or go to the coffee shop and you only know, wonder what the heck you're doing out there because it's different. We've talked about kind of progressive farmers and progressive practices. Uh, to, in your mind, what, what kind of separates a, a more progressive farmer from maybe one that's not as progressive? I, I think it goes along the lines of, of building soil and I think the only way to build soil or one aspect of it is to have um, plants photosynthesizing and putting carbon into that soil and it needs to be a diversity of plants so that we're feeding the soil microbes and if you aren't doing that I, I don't think you're building soil, I think you're sustaining it or depleting it. And in what ways uh, are you putting carbon in the soil? Just by having plants out there almost 365 days of the year, I'm using the leaves on those plants to capture sunlight and photosynthesize and put that carbon in the soil. In college and when I first started on this path, or even as a kid, I never thought of soil as an ecosystem. I just thought of it as a growing medium or dirt. Once you start learning about microbes and understanding how much is in that soil, you understand that it's an ecosystem and it's essentially hungry and it needs fed and if we aren't growing anything then we're starving it and if we're only growing one thing we're not feeding it a diverse diet either. How about the future? Do you, do you see yourself doubling in size in the next 10 years? I would definitely be staying the same size or getting smaller. Smaller? Yeah. Tell us about that. I think I can manage my smaller acres better and I, I think I can improve the soil that I have enough that I don't need the overhead and time commitment to be doing all that stuff.